So I've got a number of practitioners within my current workforce and, and what we see there is leadership. So they are able to mentor other colleagues, potentially support them with challenging pieces of work. Um, they're able to identify uh, things that they can probably do a lot better and, and that, that isn't being in, in any form, shape, negative about folk that come into the workplaces, but it's a level of experience. So the term practitioner means that people have actually been out there and done stuff. So the knows how, the knowledge base, that's you know, pretty fair, everyone that's got a piece of paper will be able to say that I've got this qualification or that. But actually the shows how, have they done it? So me having practitioners within my workforce means that I can generally say, if I give a piece of work or I delegate uh, an action to, to a colleague, that they know what to do and actually they'll know what not to do, they know their scheme. So one of the challenges I think in any kind of continual professional development process, because that's what this is, this practitioner scheme isn't a training program, it's recognising people who have been through a whole series of steps already. I require my senior managers to actually champion that within the workforce and, and ultimately it's about horses for courses, there would be certain people who it might not be the right time for um, pr a practitioner registration now, but for other ones it is, and, and you've somehow just got to find the right motivational tools. And, and I think the process that we've got at the moment, the scheme's been revisited, it's been refreshed, I think we've got learning from a number of schemes up and down the country, I think the ones that, that are running in the south of England at the moment have been tried and tested, they've identified ways in which we can support people, because some people might think, you know, that year, that 18 months, how long is it going to take me? Is this going to be an endless journey that I'm on? Uh, so we really need to just give them assurance that it's a time-limited thing, there is available support that is there, that they can access, and that they have already done the work. It's really just about capturing what they've already done and putting that into a coherent sort of framework so they can be assessed and rewarded for the stuff that they've already done. Employability. Everyone looks now for people that have got something different. If I'm looking at CVs or applications and I see somebody that is a practitioner and I see somebody that's not and there's equivalents there, I won't discriminate. But what I might do is look to expect that the person that's on the practitioner scheme may well have an edge. And that isn't to say that the other person isn't equally as good. But I'm looking to that because that's a standard that gives me assurance that this person is actually you know, committed to the work that they're doing. The other person might be highly committed or whatever else, but I know what the practitioner scheme gives me, and potentially people aren't registered with that scheme. And I know it's embryonic, so yeah, it's horses for courses, as I've already said. But people who have not been through that process may not be able to demonstrate to me that they've got the full breadth and depth of the work that I want them to deliver on. I think the second bit is assurance to the public. So if I've got people who are assured there's a level of indemnity that comes along with being a practitioner. There's a level of quality assurance that demonstrate that they've been through a process. They are registered with a body that will supervise them and oversee their CPD. So they're going to keep themselves up to date. And then the third bit, I think, is that individual. I want people in my workforce that actually want to be there. Mm. I want people that are enthusiastic about delivering good public health practice. And people that look at the practitioner scheme, generally, I would suggest, are highly motivated, are really focused on the work that they want to do and accept that in order to improve they've got to continually develop and that's what you get from those things. Now I'm not saying that people aren't practitioners and definitely not, aren't motivated, aren't committed, aren't actually in that line of thought but what I would say is that you know, if I'm looking to recruit people I'm really looking to identify colleagues who will fit and be a fit for me within my organisation and quite clearly what I want to see is people who do want to get on, who do understand that the work that we do is important and do want to get recognised for that. I don't think people ever finish. I think the whole point about being within the process is that you understand that the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis needs to be reflected on and I think reflective practice is one of the key elements of being a practitioner or any professional that's aspiring to improve what they do and to serve people better and and I think if you can get into that mindset, the process of looking back through your portfolio, looking at what you did, why you did it, what you did within it, what was the difference that you made, that then turns into 
you know, a life skill, and you can use that outside of work. You know, you, you look and say, right, you know what? I went down to the shops and I spent fifty quid on my shopping, and and, and I didn't buy as much as I wanted to because I bought things that I really shouldn't have bought. I mean, I'm, I'm abstracting there, but the next time you go out shopping, you might look for those bargains. You might think, you know, well, I took twice as long doing that last time. I can short my journey. Public health is slightly different. It's not really about shopping, but the analogy is about the same. If you go out and you do stuff, you need to understand what you've done and then reflect on how you could do it better. And even if you had a really good outcome next time, life changes and situation changes. We've got to continually evolve. If we look at the political landscape at the moment with the health and social care system and sustainable transformation partnerships and integrated care systems, if you're a practitioner, what does that mean for you? How can you adopt your practice? How can you actually change and be fit for the future? This thing about the 21st century civil servant, public servant. Um, well, that's what we are. You know, we've got to continually evolve and be ready for the changes. And, and I think the process of going through that practitioner registration will stand you in good stead for whatever you encounter in the future. Because it's about you. It's not about other people. And you've got to focus on yourself.